Hey everybody, how's it going? So, just got back from the gym this morning. First time back in about a month since my shoulder injury, but uh, somebody reminded me yesterday that I have no excuse for not doing leg day since my shoulders hurt. Uh, so, I was able to get back in there and hit it today. Uh, but before I get to this last weekend shed hunting video, I wanted to touch on something real quick. So I'm sure probably all of you that follow shed hunting have heard uh, rumors or at least have got news that uh, apparently shed antler prices have crashed because the market is saturated. Uh, initially, I was a little bit skeptical because I hear that rumor every year. It's a good excuse for the people that buy antlers to drop their prices for a little while before uh, they start going up. And uh, so I was pretty skeptical. But I actually talked to a guy here locally that buys antlers who happens to be my brother-in-law. And he said that the guy that buys the antlers from him told him, don't buy any more antlers. Uh, so apparently it's a real thing. So I'm curious uh, how how you think this will affect shed hunting. I've always heard people say, I wish the, I wish the prices would crash because then people would stop shed hunting. Um, I'm not sure that that's true. I only, out of all the people I know that shed hunt, I only know one guy that shed hunts uh, for the money. And uh, he's it's a little bit different situation and he doesn't have anything else to do. And and uh, he's done it for years and has some private property and that stuff. Uh, but for the most part, I don't know anybody that actually consistently makes money shed hunting. So I've never thought that was a real issue. I know for me, especially with deer, I shed hunt for deer because I love to find big mule deer. I've never made money on a day deer shed hunting. I mean, even if you find 20 deer antlers, they don't weigh anything. You probably didn't cover your gas, definitely didn't cover your time. So I've never understood the the notion that prices being up is what's driving everybody in the hills. Um, there's no doubt that it's social media, YouTube videos like like these and, and, and Instagram and, and Twitter and stuff like that where everybody's just constantly got shed hunting in their face and they think, oh, that would be cool. I'd like to go find some sheds too. And then they find out it's cool, it's fun. And by far, I think uh, social media has had a far larger impact on getting huge numbers of uh, people out there in the hills. But I'm curious what you guys think about it. Are you going to shed hunt less if the price, if the money's not in there uh, to be able to make money on, I mean, because you can, if you'd have a good day finding brown elk sheds, you can make a little bit of money. At least you used to be able to. So I wonder how many of you, I, I'd like you to comment below how many of you won't shed hunt if there's no money in the elk sheds, the deer sheds, how many of you, We'll continue to do it. I'm going to keep doing it. I, I, it's never been the money as far as elk sheds is. I'm, I'm not going to deny that it's not nice to be able to come home at the end of the day and 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 tell my wife you know, it didn't cost me anything to be in the hills today because most of the things that that I do hunting and other any other thing cost me money. Uh, elk shed hunting typically does not. I typically don't lose money on an elk shed hunt, but it isn't the reason why I'm out there. It's it uh, it's it's the love of finding. Uh, another form of hunting and doing something that I love out in the hills. But are you going to keep shed hunting if there's no money in the antlers? Do you think other people are going to quit shed hunting if there's no money in the antlers? Um, certainly it will have probably some effect, but I don't think as long as the social media is showing people how fun and cool and gives almost, and I, I, I'm to blame here because possibly more than other people, I will not put out videos if I don't think I have content that is interesting so if I'm not finding anything, you're not getting videos. And so it almost gives a distorted view to where you think that every time, everywhere I walk, I'm just picking up sheds. And it gives a distorted view to people thinking, oh, I can just walk around and and, and he just walks around and picks up sheds all over the place. And uh, it's certainly not the case. And maybe I should do less of that, but I don't want to post things that I that I find boring. Um, and here's, an, here's another question for you. You know, I don't like intros. If you have an intro at the beginning of your shed hunting video, the first time I watch it, I realize how long that intro is. And the next time I watch one of your videos, guess how far I skip into the video. I don't care to watch the same footage every time you put out, even for people that put out great videos. That's just me. That's why you don't see intros in, on my videos. Cause I, I'm like, this is you know 30 to 60 seconds of my life. That's wasted. I saw it last time I watched your video skip. You know, I don't like a lot of, um, just garbage B roll time that's not that's not interesting if you have a 12 minute video or you found one shed if there's not something else involved that's interesting you didn't have a video uh you have some footage to put in your next video but that's just me 
And uh, you guys can comment on that. You know, am I am I part of the problem? Because uh, almost all the time, if you see a video from me, it's because I'm finding something or doing something that I think you would be interested in. Because that's the type of videos that I find that I like to watch. And if people that put out the videos like that, uh, those are the ones I watch. So that's what I would like to do. Not that I'm copying anybody. I'm just, if I find things that are annoying or boring, I go, ah, it's not going to be in my videos. And, and that's kind of how I do it. But uh, so I have a cool video um, uh, from Friday, Saturday, I went up and watched Jeremy fight. If you guys have any interest in watching the fight, I did video it. It was so cool. Uh, he won. Spoiler alert, he won. Uh, it was it was a boxing match, and uh, he did really good, did us proud. And then my little brother Kevin, just to get out of shed hunting with me again, uh, his wife had the baby about eight weeks early last night, right after the fight. So uh, he probably won't be coming up, but uh, we'll get to the video now. Lots of cool artifacts today and uh, a couple of decent antlers. All right. Hey, how's it going? So it's Friday morning. Uh, looks like I only have today because I got to go Saturday and get to go watch my brother fight in uh, the executive fights, the Holy War. Should be pretty fun, but... Also means I got to take a day off from shed hunting. Uh, so I had somebody supposed to be with me today. And for about the fourth time, he's dogged me. Uh, those of you that know, it's not easy to invite somebody to go shed hunting with you. Because there's almost no upside. They're going to pick up antlers that you might have otherwise picked up. So you got to be careful who you take out. And it's not easy to do. And, and uh, I was supposed to have company today, but... I'm not, or I'm, I'm on by myself, but you know what that means. What that means is you get bound and determined to have such a good day that they wish they'd have come with you. So that's what the intent is today. Now, I'm in a spot that uh, is cool because it's equal chance of finding elk and deer. And there's specifically a bull in here that I really would like to find. Uh, and we've already, we're 20 minutes from the truck. And I see tines up here. Let me see if I can show you, turn you around. Let me get where I can. Can you see it on the other side of that tree? Right there. Right in the center. Those are tines. All right. Get up there. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> nice big six. Broomed off on the fourth a little bit. Good girl, honey. Good girl. That is a nice bull. Solid bull. That fourth wasn't missing. That's a... That's a nice bull. 340 easy. That is so cool. That's the way to start the day. Now the trouble is, do I pick that up and pack it all day? Or do I mark it and leave it there and hope I can find it again? Which I think is what I'm going to do. Tuck it up here underneath the tree. Um... Let me see if I can set the camera up and show you the antler real quick, just in case we don't find it again. See if I can see it from there. <laughs> Look at that guy. Been on the ground probably three, four years at least. Starting to get chalky, but it's still solid, heavy. So we got a right side. Honey, you're kind of blocking the camera. Can you scoot over? Thank you. Got a right side, decent third, not the San Juan third. Good distance between his points. That's just a nice solid bull. Whew, that's a good way. That's a start. We want to find something huge today or a big pile like this. Uh, make it a good day. Come with me. There we go. Some of you will get a kick out of this. Look at this, really nice representation of, of uh, 
Anasazi pottery. We've got painted. That one had a handle on it. The edge of a bowl, rounded edge there of a bowl. Honey, you're not helping. Probably this is a couple of pots broken here. You see the edge of a rim here, the edge of a rim here. And of course that means that uh, where there is a trash pile, there was a ruin. And in this case, it's a cliff dwelling. Not really well preserved. You can see the one rock wall left right here, a little bit more right there. Just a little one. Not as uh, well off as some of them in this area. But uh, this kind of stuff is always fun to find. P2, P3, Pueblo 2-3, period. All right, let's see. If I find anything cool here, I'll uh, bring you back. Here's another cool example. I don't know if you noticed the difference between the earlier pottery and this one. Let's see if I can't find an example here real quick. How uh, they're very distinct geometric patterns. Very clean lines, I mean, for being hand-painted on there. And that one right there is a little bit different. It's kind of like a modification, maybe an early version of that type of geometric pattern. Maybe transitional period, or maybe just somebody that <laughs> had their own way of doing things. Well, here we go. Here was something cool. So here is a Matadi broken in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. There's another one broken, but here is one unbroken. Two monos, and uh, medium, not a shallow or deep, but really nice matati. So that gives you an indication that they were probably raising corn on this flat that I'm walking right now. I am super bummed out that I have been hitting boot tracks, because honestly I've never found boot tracks in this area before. But it is what it is, and I'm hoping to walk up on something any minute. Just checking real quick to see if there's a point or something cool here I can show you. Anyway, cool artifacts there. Keep going. All right, while we're on this note, here's another good specimen. Edge of a bowl. Cool pattern on that one too. Got to be a mound up here above me. Let's see what we can find. All right, let me show you here. So right here, I don't know if you can see, but there's rooms right here. This is a Pueblo. So you got rooms right here and on this ridge line all the way around right here in front of me, all the way around to here, there was rooms right here in the center you can see that this is sunken right here. So there would have been a kiva right here, which would have been their ceremonial room. Let me get you a little bit closer to the room so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's a fairly large, uh, so all these rocks right here are one room there, one room here, three rooms, four rooms, and they go all the way around this circle. Pretty good sized complex, not, not huge, there's certainly bigger ones, but a little bit of bone has been exposed there, something digging, animal. But uh, this is a pretty good sized little community, probably, you know, enough for four or five families. And they would have been farming these flats that I'm walking. This time period here, if we look at 
see if I can find some pottery. If we look at this, this is usually predating slightly the stuff that's in the cliff dwellings. They typically lived, you know, on these mesa tops, and then they got driven to the so corrugated, corrugated. Not all going to be coordinated, corrugated here. That's corrugated. They would have been driven to the canyons uh, for security. Probably uh, the Navajo that were moving into this area. See, there's a little bit of painted. Uh, or what was driving them into the canyons and living in those cliff dwellings. Uh, the word Anasazi uh, means enemy in Navajo, as I understand it. And probably if I walked around here for just a minute, we'd find an arrowhead or something cool. Maybe I'll do that and see if I can show you one. Alright, this is kind of a day for cool pottery, I guess, but hang on, honey, don't get over here. This is super cool. It had just a little teeny opening on it, and it had a little hook here. It probably was had a hook here and probably a hook maybe on this side to where it could be hung up. It's got some really cool patterning on it. See the handle? A little, just a little teeny opening. Don't see very many like that. Let's let's get that up out of the walkway where something's not going to come along and stomp on it because uh, that's a unique piece I haven't seen much pottery like that lots of it here this was a place that was lived in for at least a fairly good amount of time alright here we go here's another one nice one Somebody's come along here and stacked stuff on it. This has had some use. This one's the only one that probably actually belongs there. That one's seen some use. Another nice mono. Ah, uh, Matati. This is an older ruin here. No pottery, just basically fire broken rocks. Lots of cool stuff out here, but the antlers have sure been hard to come by today. But we're going to keep pushing. I would say it's been at least two hours since I found that elk antler. Uh, maybe longer. I don't care. I'm not looking at the clock. I'm just, it's been a while. But I just think. All right, we've been going for a while now. Find them up, honey. Where is it? I finally see an antler. Been getting into more and more and more. More and more and more. Uh, got a lion track, too. Lion track right there. Right there. Yeah, I've been getting into more and more deer tracks. <laughs> Good girl, bring it here. Here we go. Here we go. Little three-point brownie. Huh? Didn't expect that. Been getting into more and more deer tracks, so I been trying to focus my look to the small things, and we just stumbled up on that one. This little flat. So we'll keep pushing around. All right, find the other one. Find another one. Good girl. Find him up. Find him up. Let's see if we can't turn up some more in this flat. We'll take deer brownies. All right, I got another one here. Ooh, old one. Good girl, honey. Look at that. Good girl. Good girl. Let's get you a treat. Let's get you a treat. 
Good girl. Oh, that one's a hundred years old. Would have been a big three. I think that one deserves to go right there. And we keep going. Bound to find something big soon. Man, there's been lion tracks. This is a different lion than that first one. This is a good tom. Just about a certain thing. Look at that mono grindstone. Just about a certain thing that I'm gonna walk up on a kill deadhead at some point with two lions out here. There's good deer sign, occasionally oak sign, so I'm still hoping to get into some something cool. Something big. It's just that type of area where it just feels like you should at any minute, so stay tuned. More garbage chalk. Hey, honey, good girl. Good girl. That one's a hundred years old, huh? Good girl. Good dog. Good girl. Good doggy. Good girl. You can leave that one there too. Goodness. Hoping for something a lot bigger and a lot fresher than that. Been looking for water for honey for quite a while. Come across this pretty good sized puddle. <laughs> good girl. About time to turn around and start working our way our way back. All right, here we got something interesting looking. See it right in the center there. Let's go see what that is. That looks like a nice deer. I actually spotted this one kind of over my shoulder as I was almost past it. Looks like a solid deer. Yeah. Not fresh, but... Good girl, honey. Had a little cheater to the inside. Nice buck. Definitely keep that one. Let's go up this hill. Let's make sure you didn't drop it here, and then we'll go follow it that way. See if we can't match him up. All right, we're just heading out. We're heading back toward the truck, and we just about walked past this one. Honey is plenty tired. But here's another nice old deer. Cool acorn there at the top. Blading. Sweet. And there was boot tracks, literally maybe 20 yards that way. So they didn't get all of them. We're back into primarily old elk track, so I'm hoping to still get onto another elk shed or two here in a minute. Coming through this area. Let's see what we can do. Look at that. Just walked up on a little side by side, two by three. Good girl, honey. You're too tired to care about antlers, aren't you? Oh, we still got a long ways to go back, but. Slowly, adding to the stack.